electroanatomic mapping is standard practice in AF ablation procedures. However, while early success rates for AF elimination are high, redo procedures are far from rare. They end up being required in up to 50% of patients. So improved technology may reduce the need for additional ab ablation procedures, and we are here to talk about one such approach in uh, Orlando at the AHA 2015 meeting. It's novel global ultrasound imaging and continuous dipole density mapping initial findings in AF. And I'm talking to Dr. Andrew Grace, who is an MD and a PhD at Papworth Hospital in Cambridge University, and he is one of the largest clinical practices in cardiac arrhythmia management in the UK and specializes in catheter ablation techniques. I mean, this whole issue of redo procedures is really important, correct? I think it's fundamentally important. I think the whole issue with atrial fibrillation is a mechanistic understanding of what's going on. Clearly the pulmonary veins have been very important for us, particularly in patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, but I'd say persistent atrial fibrillation even before the redo emerges as a possibility. We just don't know mechanistically, and this is a heterogeneous disorder. I individuals have their own story, if you like to tell, through the atria, whether there are genetic influence, epigenetic influences, and environmental issues and metabolic issues that, they've, that have emerged during their lifetime. So these are things that you need to measure very specifically for that patient. This is an area of precision medicine, in my view, so we Absolutely. need to make the measurements in those individuals. So describe the technology that you're using. Mm -hmm. This is a, a new technology. It's been developed fundamentally by bioengineers, but obviously look into an application in, in the space occupied by the electrophysiologists. It's a catheter, and it's placed in the um, left atrial chamber or the right atrial chamber. It's not been used in the ventricle yet. It's 10 French. It goes up a 16 French outer diameter catheter. It has 48 probes on. The 48 probes consist of ultrasound, 48 ultrasound probes, but then there's also an electrode associated with each ultrasound probe. It collects an enormous amount of information. It collects 150,000 um, ultrasound points every minute and something like 140, 150,000 um, unipolar electrograms every second. So this is a remarkably rapid, remarkable, dense um, information acquisition specific for that individual and designed to guide therapy. So how many patients have you looked at so far? So far we've done eight at my institution, you know, with atrial fibrillation. And, you know, the, uh, this meeting I think there are nine in the poster that we've had um, today. But I'd say there's a certain consistency emerging in terms of the patterns of atrial fibrillation. I feel that we're seeing atrial fibrillation probably more completely than anyone has ever seen it before in a truly panoramic, non-contact way. This is a catheter that bounces the ultrasound off the wall of the chamber. It doesn't have to actually touch the... Um, myocardium itself in order to gather the data. So how complicated is the procedure? The procedure is straightforward. Again, what we have been doing so far is patients coming forward for um, atrial fibrillation ablation, as clinically indicated, have agreed to participate. The catheter has been placed in the chamber. The uh, information has been gathered over a 10 minute period or thereabouts. The catheter has then come out. We've then done their standard ablation, CARTO guided, and then come back in to remap during sinus with them to see what the characteristics are there. These are proof of principle studies fundamentally. What is it that you're finding? What is it that you're seeing that hasn't been seen before? I think we're seeing it as it truly is, frankly. I mean, with contact approaches, one simply gets, you, one has to touch the myocardium in that Correct. particular location to get the full story. The other fundamental issue is this idea of dipole density mapping. And dipole density That's mapping it provides a resolution four times that of voltage mapping. And it's based on a fundamental physical principle. It's, the, um, res it's been resolved by a physicist in Switzerland and basically he has um, you know, worked this out. This is from Maxwell's equations. You know, this goes back 150 years or whatever, and he's gone back to fundamentals, and essentially what it, it, it describes is the local dipole, the local voltage change in individual cells, rather than the, the peripheral voltage that emerges from different areas that you're not interested in, maybe far field signals. And this, as I say, leads this fourfold increment in resolution of the signals that one's observing. So where are you in terms of what's next? Well, what's next, I think, is to do further proof of principle. I mean, the fundamental issue is if using the maps that we've now obtained, once right. we've gone through the next stage of interpretation, based upon those maps, um, can we guide therapy? And for example, if there is termination of atrial fibrillation mm -hmm. with a targeted burn, which I think is what we will see, then that opens up 
takes the lid off the whole thing and then we can move forward from there with strategic approaches. I think if one of the points I've been making to various people, I think if this doesn't allow the resolution of atrial fibrillation, what will? You know, this is this is the information, this is the mapping information that we right. require. I think, you know, this will, um, you know, will, uh, I'm sure it'll work, I'm sure and it'll drive it forward. And of course then there'll be trials, um, you know, in order with endpoints to be decided in regard to moving it in, into the clinic and move it into general deployment. I mean, the bottom line that you have is the combination of CT-like anatomy and dipole density mapping opens the possibility to map AF with more precision to identify areas of interest as potential ablation targets. Absolutely. That's where we're at. Absolutely. And I think, but I'm, personally, I think anyone who sees this, when I'm talking to patients in clinic, I'm talking about the room is the atrium, it's bouncing the ultrasound off the wall, reconstruct the anatomy, and then we go there. As opposed to the moment it's empirical, you know, burns around the pulmonary veins. This is not personalized at the moment, it's a catch-all. And of course, then we don't catch everybody because many people it's not from the pulmonary veins. And this is the fundamental of where we are. So I'm going to need to talk to you the next time when we have more to talk about. So where, where will this be? When will this be? Well, I think we move it. We move in at enormous speeds, uh, and so I think you know we by this time. Actually, I think just after Christmas we will have, have got the answer to the question as whether targeted ablation dot least determination. I think we will know that. So will I see you at ACC 15? I'd love to see. Good. I like that idea. And we have a variety of coverage from the AHA meeting here in Orlando. Please check here online as well as in CardioSource World News where I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.